Live from ABC 13, this is an Eyewitness News special report. Break, breaking news here on Channel 13, I'm Jonathan Bruce. Harris County deputies responding right now to reports of an active shooter at Heights High School here in Houston. Yeah, the, I'm Nick Notario and this broke an hour ago and minute by minute we're getting updates and the latest that we just got from seconds ago from Houston police is that at this time there are no confirmed injuries. However, obviously they know that parents are concerned if you get a call or you see the images on your screen and that is why they are letting parents know that the staging area will be at 306 East 15th Street. We have crews on the field right now who are outside the building and the good news is we haven't seen any uh, lawn for our kids running outside the building, but there is a heavy police presence, Jonathan. A heavy police presence and still a search to find out what happened and a search we believe for the potential shooters want to go up to Sky I 13's Don Armstrong with the latest. Don. may not have done just yet, Nick. Uh, we do know again, we just spoke with a witness on scene who says he talked with his son who was inside. He said they are locked down. He could not get out, uh, but that obviously some relief that he's okay, but it's a total lockdown right now uh, inside the school. It sounds like we've got Don Armstrong now. All right. Yeah, Don, if you can hear us, this is Nick Vittorio and Jonathan Bruce down here at the desk. Can you just give us an update on what you're seeing from above in the yeah, sky? Yes, Nick and Jonathan, I, I am. I'm just uh, focusing in on some uh, look like uh, students or at least children uh, here that uh, walk down the street. Now, understand that uh, the area directly in front of the high school and behind the high school blocked off by police, and there are areas that they're not allowing anyone to go into, but we do not see any hurried activity by law enforcement out here whatsoever. As you can see, there's police officers right there walking down the street. Uh, when we arrived on the scene quite some time ago now, we did notice that uh, some SWAT officers were running down the street to get into the back of the high school, and uh, obviously they went right in. We have not seen any students come out of the high school, so we're going to assume that everybody is on lockdown here. Uh, HISD does have a lockdown protocol just for instances like this. Give you a wide shot here at the Heights High School in the Heights area of West Houston. This is near West Houston in the Heights area. Let me put up a sky map uh, 13 here for you to give you an idea of the streets that uh, are around the Heights uh, High School. Heights Boulevard is closest to us. Uh, we're also north of I-10, the Katy Freeway, and just to the west of I-45, the North Freeway. But as you can see, a very heavy police presence here. And I was kind of alarmed at first when I saw the fire department here and ambulances here, but uh, they weren't any you uh, doing anything other than staging uh, near the high school in case there were injuries. And I hear you report that there have not been any injuries reported so far. There is the front of the high school. Earlier, all I saw was a guard standing uh, in front of the uh, open doors there at the front of the high school, not allowing anybody in, clearly. Uh, this is an area that is not uh, being accessed by the public. There is crime scene tape around it just to keep the public out. But I wanted to give you an idea around the high school exactly what's happening here. Uh, we did talk to HPD helicopter when we arrived on the scene. There were two of them here. One of them had a marksman sharpshooter on board just in case uh, they were needed. Needed. They were not needed, but both of those helicopters are still here. We also heard early on that there were three runners from the high school. Don't know if they were involved in this or just running for fear. Don't know that. There's a lot of unanswered questions that I'm sure will probably take hours, if not days, to uh, actually figure out and uh, hear back from HPD on an official report. But as you can see, constables here, as well as the Sheriff's Department and Houston Police Department, uh, probably, I'm guessing, at least 500 officers here on the scene based on the number of cars that have responded to this active shooter call. Uh, we have not heard any more. Uh, the students are still inside on lockdown, and we're keeping our post here about a mile away. Again, we were asked to back off, so we're at a mile away from the Heights High School here uh, with our SkyMap helicopter, and as you can see, uh, it's quite a scene out here on the near west side of Houston. Back to you guys.
At Sky I 13's Don Armstrong. I'm Jonathan Bruce here with Nick Notario. Nick, one thing that stands out here is we don't have any reason to believe it doesn't appear that there is a shooter in the building. We know that uh, deputies and law enforcement and SWAT teams have been inside to clear the building. Obviously, uh, what happened at Uvalde is still uh, in the forefront of everyone's mind in terms of what goes on with the police response in a time like this. But Certainly one difference uh, seems to be, at least now, we don't believe that there is a shooter inside the school. Yeah, and six minutes ago, Precinct 1 Constable uh, Alan Rosen said that they are still working to clear the building. So, But the good news is we are hearing there are no injuries reported at this time. And we do have multiple crews on the field. Uh, one of them is ABC 13's Maya Shea, who is there, just got there moments ago. Maya, wh what can you tell us is happening right now outside the school? I'll tell you, I'm at 13th and Arlington, and I'm at a corner where there are lots of law enforcement. You can see Houston Fire and Rescue Department of Public Security. We have also uh, some constables offices here, but also I want to show you this corner because this is a corner filled with parents. And all of these parents are on the phone, they're texting, they're trying to reach their children. And ma'am, have you guys been able to get a hold yes, of your kids? Yes. What did they tell you? Um, they're, they're safe, and that's it. Can you tell me, I know it's such a tight-knit community, and with Uvalde still so fresh on everyone's mind, what went through your heart when you heard this? My heart just dropped. There's nothing you can say. It just dropped. You see, you feel the words, you see the words. It's just it's hard. It's just hard. Do you have, uh, how old is your? I have a junior and it's freshman. And, and you've been able to get a hold of them? My, my oldest texted me from another friend's phone number. He had no data on his cell phone, so. Yeah. You know, certain, certain areas in the school doesn't have, you can get data at all. But he used his friend's phone and he said he was fine. And what? And and are you guys feeling better I'm or feeling you're better still? now that I know my kids are good and safe? We're just waiting to pick up. That's it. I can't even imagine. You know, it's like there's so much going on through our minds. Whenever we hear a phone call like this, this is really just so scary. It sure is. <laughs> Well, I'm glad both of your kids are okay. We hope that they will get released here shortly. And what they're doing is they're trying to separate the media from the family. That's what authorities are doing. They're telling the parents they're going to move them a couple blocks north, and they're going to keep us away uh, from the parents. Uh, I believe that's usually what happens. But I'm going to lean over here and see what they have to say. So we don't have any evidence that there is anybody right now. Where officers are still doing a double take, searching for, for people and searching for victims. We haven't found anybody, okay? Uh, for official response, please refer to uh, or, or chiefs. They're going to issue out a, a, an official statement later. But we haven't had any reporting of any injuries yet. We do have a family reunification center at 306 East 15. If you guys want to go over there, that's where we're going to be having the families reun uh, reuni reunify and get everybody together, okay? But no injuries yet. Okay, but no there, problem. There, Was there, there shots fired? Fire? We, I don't have any details right now. Uh, so, like I said, the chiefs, I'm sure, are going to be giving a, a, a statement shortly. Uh, but that's as far as I know. I want to make sure that our family knows where to go to reunify with their family. So, that's uh, my recollection. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So far. All right, so did you guys just hear that? This is from a police officer on the scene just telling us, to the best of her knowledge, no one is hurt uh, and no one, uh, no one is injured in this possible active shooter situation. I emphasize possible because the situation is so fluid. And as you can imagine, as a parent myself, when you hear about situations like this, given the fact that Uvalde is so fresh in everyone's minds, you immediately think the worst and you fear for the lives of your children and their teachers and everyone here at the school. That's certainly the, what we're seeing around among the parents here. They're so concerned about their children's safety and of course of all the other kids who attend a large high school like Heights High School. So the good news right now is that every parent I've spoken to and granted it's just a small amount of parents. They've all said they've been able to get a hold of their children and this police officer right here said to the best of her knowledge um, that there was nobody
Thanks so much. That's ABC 13's Maya Shea reporting and a bit of a signal, signal difficulty there, which you can certainly understand, Nick, with so many people gathered in one spot. I think it's very important here uh, to establish what we know and what we don't, and certainly what happened in uh, the reports of the shooting itself. And we've got a new update here uh, from Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. Yeah, and this coming in just moments ago from Commissioner's Court, uh, we have learned that Judge Lena Hidalgo says two kids got into a fight that the threat of an active shooter did not happen. And this just coming in moments ago from Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. We had reports of a possible active shooter about an hour ago, and now we are hearing from Judge Lena Hidalgo that um, that is not the case, that it was a fight um, that happened there or somewhere there nearby. And um, Jonathan, we're also, you know, we're hearing from law enforcement. We just heard from the county judge. We have not yet heard from HISD. And I know parents um, ha have not received any information, and we are trying to get information from HISD as well. And remember, this happened out more than an hour ago, and yet we have not heard anything from HISD. An important thing, certainly, for HISD, first and foremost, to uh, uh, assure that their own response to the situation is most important, right, before sharing that information. But as you mentioned, uh, certainly so many concerned parents, uh, staffers, anyone with any connections to the school, uh, that's obviously paramount, but it is important to keep in mind, right, that uh, the response itself, I mean, certainly with what we've learned in the last couple of months here, a few months in the state of Texas in terms of that initial district police response is crucial to get right first. Yes, but uh, obviously if the judge is aware that it was a fight and not an active shooter, you would have to imagine HISD is aware of that as well. And so you would think that HISD would want to get that out to parents as soon as possible. So, uh, but you're looking right now, we have uh, crews on the, on the ground there outside of Heights High School. This is in like West Houston area. You can see kids in the window looking outside. Um, from what we have heard, there is it's kids have told their parents they're in lockdown right now. And so you can see some of them peering through the window, pointing outside, probably looking at all of the action that's going on outside of the building right now. Just a, a terrifying situation. We know, again, still working to uh, confirm reports of kind of what the potential shooting was. Uh, we do have some new video here, Nick, of police uh, or law enforcement actually going uh, through the classrooms to sort of, uh, I mean, this is the first time we're looking at this video, to speak with the students ultimately and check on things. Yeah, and this, you can see the officers going into the classroom right now. And, um, you know, what we have just heard from moments ago is it was not, in fact, an active shooter. According to Judge Lena Hidalgo, it was a fight that broke out. Uh, so, and there are no reports of any, any injuries at all. So that is the really good news. If you are a parent watching this, you have a kid at Heights High School. Uh, the thing to know that there is a staging area, and that uh, staging area is at 306 East 15th Street and we just heard uh, parents were out in front of the school. The officers were telling the parents to move to that location that they will be reunified uh, with their children at that area. So if you have a child and you want to go pick up your kid and meet them, that is the location to go to right now. Just astonishing video right now as we see uh, the students of Heights High School kind of peering out the windows. We just uh, talked with a witness on the ground a few moments ago, uh, minutes ago, uh, who had been in conversation with his son who was in the classroom, obviously terrified, obviously worried, and uh, reassured that the son was okay. Uh, the father told us that uh, the son relayed to them that they were on total lockdown and uh, Nick he, he actually communicated to his son he said try to get out of the building and the son said hey we couldn't get out but again an important thing here and I think uh, uh, such a relief in terms of the news is that it is not an active shooter situation and there are no uh, confirmed injuries uh, that we know of at this point but still a little unclear to me Nick in terms of what exactly happened. We know HPD uh, followed up with that Harris County report that they were responding to an active shooter, HPD saying there were reports of a shooting. And, you know, we heard uh, ABC 13 Maya Shea talk to a parent. You could hear the emotion in her voice and talking about how one of her kids had to use another child's phone just to reach out. So you have the, the horror of what these parents are going through and you could just hear that emotion from that mother talking about 
what was running through she said it broke her heart is when she heard about what had happened and then hearing from her child and so it's obviously a very terrifying situation the good news is there appears to be no injuries it does not appear to be an active shooter situation and um, you know we continue to have crews down there on the field we have uh, multiple crews Micah Hatfield was uh, one of the first reporters there on the scene uh, for us and here in the area. And Micah, what can you tell us that you have learned? Well, we've still just been out here with the parents. They're waiting, we're waiting. But you can kind of tell a lot by just looking around, right? You can see that the, the police out here, there's quite a few uh, different agencies out here uh, standing along the perimeter, different areas outside of the school. And no one seems to be in any kind of rush, so that's good news. We've seen people walk, uh, law enforcement officers walk into the school, and we've seen them come out. Uh, and it doesn't seem like they're in a hurry. So, uh, again, uh, got to be reassuring for this group of parents who are standing out here uh, next to us right now. But, you know, you're talking to some of them and they're saying that this is their worst nightmare, as you can imagine, considering what just happened in, in Uvalde. Um, but I heard you guys, Jonathan and Nick, talking a few minutes ago about the, the man, Anthony, that we interviewed, his son inside the school on lockdown. And he said, I've always told my son, if there's an active shooter, you need to get out of the school. Um, and, and it's just interesting to hear that, you know, these are conversations that parents are having now with their students. Um, it, it's not an in the moment thing. It's not. I told my son when he called me today that he needed to get out of the school. It's we've had these conversations before, and and that's a really really sad situation. Um, a lot of people out here, a lot of parents out here, with their work shirts on, with their work badges around their neck, and and you can just tell that they came over here in, in quite a hurry. But like I said earlier, the family, uh, the parents who are out here, they're not they're not uh, you know in a frenzy crying it's but it's still even knowing that no one is hurt inside of the school hearing those reports you can still tell that they're on the edge of their seat and they're nervous and 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 just getting a report like this and having to rush over here they're they've told us that they were assuming the worst and i think that's pretty pretty troubling but a lot of law enforcement out here uh, several different constables offices Houston police the sheriff's office the FBI ATF uh, and that's just to name a few that I've seen right here directly in front of me we've seen helicopters overhead drones flying the school um, a pretty pretty substantial response here to the Heights High School and we're right outside the front doors of it at Columbia and 13th Street they've got a large area around the school blocked off trying to um, keep traffic to a minimum as they tried to figure out what figure out what was going on out here as we get a, a look at uh, some of the different views of the scene around here Micah one follow-up how would you characterize the uh, communication right now between law enforcement outside on the perimeter uh, and parents wanting to get information and obviously uh, concerned about their their children inside well, I, I haven't really seen, I saw one law enforcement officer um, talking to uh, a parent out here, but other than that, there hasn't really been any communication. I will say I'm seeing, I've seen some texts on people's phones that they're monitoring the news, trying to figure out what's going on, texting the parents who are out here, telling them, hey, the news says that, that no one inside is hurt. They're monitoring what HPD is putting out on social media. So uh, they're, they're trying to keep themselves up to date as much as possible. But as we know, as members of the media, it's not just any, uh, um, any member of law enforcement that can talk to you, there are certain people who are designated. So we're kind of in a holding pattern, and, and these parents are too, to find out exactly what went on inside the school. Obviously, a lot of different stories going around, um, but hopefully we get some answers soon about what actually happened. Communication, Michael. What about HISD? Has any, have any parents heard from them? Did they get a, pro a push notification, an email, a phone call, anything at all from the district? I mean, this, this went out almost an hour and a half ago now. I haven't heard that, um, and and that doesn't mean that they haven't. I I don't know that they. I, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question. Um, to be honest with you. Certainly, uh, a lot we are working to find out quickly here, as uh, quick as possible, as long as we can confirm it. That's ABC 13's uh, Micah Hatfield there on the ground. I'm Jonathan Bruce here with uh, Nick Notario as we continue coverage of this uh, 13 breaking news alert at a. Uh, 
Nick, what has to be characterized as a massive uh, law enforcement response to some differing reports of a shooting and an active shooter. We've since learned that there uh, is no active shooter, at least according to Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. One thing that certainly stands out in our minds is the uh, importance of uh, the po police response in terms of these initial moments, certainly, and uh, we see it on screen in front of us. Yeah, and Darn Armstrong is flying above in Sky 13, and he told us not too long ago, he estimated 500 law enforcement um, was out front to give you an idea of the scale of the response that was happening. And, um, you know, we've, we, we do have crews there on the field. We did talk to a parent uh, not too long ago who gave us their reaction, their feeling. Let's go ahead and take a listen again as to uh, what was running through their mind. And ma'am, have you guys been able to get a hold yeah. of your kids? What do they tell you? Um, they're, they're safe, and that's it. Can you tell me, I know it's such a tight-knit community, and with Uvalde still so fresh on everyone's mind, what went through your heart when you heard this? My heart just dropped. There's nothing you can say. It just dropped. You see, you'll feel the words, you see the words. It's just it's hard. This is hard. Do you have, uh, how old is your? I have a junior and it's freshman. And, and you've been able to get a hold of them? He, my, my oldest texted me from another friend's phone number. He had no data on his cell phone. So, yeah. you know, certain, certain areas in the school doesn't have, you can get data at all. But he used his friend's phone and he said he was fine. And what, and, and are you guys feeling better I'm or you're better still? now that I know my kids are good and safe? And Jonathan, you can just hear the emotion on that mother. I mean, even though she's got relief that her kids are okay, it's just her heart broke when she found out what happened. Absolutely. It's uh, the worst nightmare. I think it's uh, not the first time we've used that phrase and certainly uh, all coming into a clear focus with uh, what we saw at Robb Elementary School. But let's keep it here uh, right now at Heights High School, this in the uh, north part of the Bayou City and uh, Nick, I think one of the biggest questions for me now at this point, and I, I think that frankly, we're just still working to find out is, uh, were there actual shots fired? How many shots were actually fired? And um, what's the status of, of those people? If so, it seems like at this point, again, multiple law enforcement agencies have told us that there are no injuries reported. So the question uh, becomes for me, what, what is the, the status of the search and ultimately uh, the, the shooting that was initially reported? Yeah, and I'm, I'm monitoring the great thing about social media is you can get real-time information from law enforcement. And um, they haven't updated uh, since there was um, reports of a possible active shooter on their accounts. However, we have heard from Judge Lena Hidalgo just moments ago that this was a fight and not an active shooter uh, situation. Still, law enforcement is working to clear the building at this hour. If you have a parent, if you are a parent that has, you have a child that goes to Heights High School and you are looking to meet up with your child, the uh, staging area, you can see it right there on your screen, 306 East 15th Street. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. We see these active shooter situations at schools and you, you see those images of the children running from the building. We haven't seen any of that. There's been none of that. It's been uh, quiet from the student perspective from outside the building, but we have seen a heavy, heavy police presence outside. And one of the advantages of uh, Sky I-13 is uh, our ability to really survey the whole situation. And uh, Nick, what we're looking at on the right right here is really one of the uh, bigger kind of gatherings we've seen, not just of uh, right students, but there's staffers inside, there's uh, teachers, uh, really spanning the gamut, right? And this obviously uh, a pretty large uh, student body when you're talking about HISD. But one of the things that we've also seen uh, from pilot Don Armstrong and the Sky I-13 crew is all of the different areas around potentially that are, are being searched right now. And I don't know if Don, if you can, if you're with us um, and you can, I think we're looking at the staging area right now. Um, is, is that right? And Don's just giving us a quick picture uh, here, but we're gonna keep monitoring the situation. Jonathan, we have a lot of crews there on the field. We will be back, of course, for Eyewitness News at three. So we still got a lot to gather to get information for parents. Eyewitness News at three, and we'll have continuing coverage on abc13.com and our ABC 13 live stream, uh, as we will have y'all certainly covered every step of the way here from this 13 breaking news alert. Stay with us.
So we continue here on the live stream with ABC 13. Certainly so many ways uh, to watch ABC 13 live 24-7, 365. I'm Jonathan Bruce along with Nick Natario. And Nick, I know uh, a lot of certainly people watching very concerned right now because, I mean, we're talking about a uh, major school district here in the city of Houston. When we're talking about Heights High School, you can see the size of it uh, on the screen right now. And we've certainly seen the size of the law enforcement response as our pilot uh, with Sky I-13 uh, and uh, Don Armstrong told us about uh, 500 law enforcement officers estimated responding to this. Yeah, and we're also still waiting to hear from HISD itself. Uh, we have not received any information about what has happened at Heights High School. Uh, we did ask Micah Hatfield, who's there on the ground for us, if any parents have been notified. She had not uh, been able to get that answer from parents there on the scene, but that is we are working actively here in our newsroom to get information from HISD. I can tell you, you know, I'm on HISD's police social media. They have retweeted information from HPD, but HISD police itself has not posted any information uh, for parents at this hour, but a number of parents are there on the scene. Uh, Jonathan, you can see one right there, and let's just go ahead and dip in and, and listen to the interview here. Them out. So, yeah, you must be. We're we're live on ABC 13 streaming now. Tell me what's going on through your mind right now as you wait for them to release your daughter. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? People don't value life. Why do you want to come after the children? Why do you want to come after? Why do you want to go to a school? That's what's going through my mind. Thank God today. I hope. I hope that I'm glad. That, Everything worked out the way it is because I was told they got it under control. But what if? But what if? You know? I just ask everyone to pray today, tomorrow, every day, pray for us to have behavioral health is real. Pray about it. It's got to get better. It's got, this has got to stop. I mean, I'm, my daughter, when she called me and told me, come get me, I'm scared. That's all I had to hear, and I'm here. And I would made it in about 15 to 20 minutes for my job. I live, I work off of Bel Air, and uh, I'm just waiting now. She said they're being escorted out of the school. It must be so scary too, with you know images of Uvalde and so many other schools, Santa Fe, playing through all of our minds every time we hear something like this. Uvalde was the first because I cried for days and I still pray for Uvalde families for everything that happened to them and I thought to myself what would I do if that happened in there all the way up here that's all I was thinking about was Uvalde and thinking I can't be the one of those parents this is going to be okay this is going to be okay it's not going to be like that because we we have a great police officers I just I just I, I have no words to say other than I'm just glad it's not like Yavaldi, you know? But I think they got it under control. That's what, that's, those are the words that I heard, that they had it under control, that made me feel better. And I've got to get myself together because my, i got to be calm for my daughter. And um, I hope this doesn't make her not want to come back to, to school, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Thank you. You're doing great, Annette. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. You're fine. You're fine. Please go get, go get your kids. Thank you. You'll be okay. It's ABC 13's uh, Maya Shade, Nick, speaking with uh, parents on the scene. And again, you can just understand and, and sense the, uh, the fear, uh, the emotion, the anger, and really every emotion. And I think we saw for the first time, I think you were pointing it out, was that students It looked like walking out of the building? It I looked think... like we saw it with Sky Eye. We yeah. saw students being escorted as we heard right. uh, the parent, I believe Maya said uh, her name was Annette, uh, say that her daughter was being escorted out. Uh, I, I do want to want to point out here. It's it's very important. What we know so far, uh, according to Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo, this was not an active uh, shooter, nor was it a, a, a sort of a random shooter. You know, like we saw in Uvalde. Certainly, that is at the forefront of everyone's mind, and it's important to take the precautions like this. That's the whole point, right? Of what we what we learn from situations like this. A according to what we know right now, though, this was two kids who got into a fight and, and not, in fact, you know, a random uh, a gunman coming into a school. And so uh, I just think it's important to establish that and make that clear, right? You're exactly right. And if, if you have a child that goes to Heights High School, um, you know, it, as kids are being cleared, we're told that the staging area is 306 East 15th Street, and uh, you know, according to the um, 
Precinct 1 Constable Deputy's Office. This happened at 1 o'clock. It is now 2.30, so it's 90 minutes ago, and we still have no answers from HISD. Up. Oh, now we are just getting it a minute. Uh, and 90 minutes after uh, this broke out, we are hearing for the first time, and I got it there, I can see it just posted. This is from HISD, it reads, the security of our students and staff is our top priority today. A threat was made against Heights High School. As a precautionary measure, Heights High School, Hogg and Hamilton Middle Schools immediately went into lockdown. It goes on to read, the Houston Police Department and HISD police continue to investigate the threat though no evidence was found to substantiate the threat. Students at Heights High School will be dismissed early and school buses are en route to transfer, transport students who normally ride buses. So that's some uh, great news there from HISD giving us an update. It took 90 minutes, but we got an update from HISD and uh, learned some information there. And I'll point out some slightly conflicting information than what we heard initially with Harris County deputies responding to uh, reports. And again, they have to respond to the reports of an active shooter. Uh, then HPD uh, responding to reports of uh, an unconfirmed shooting. And then uh, we got from Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo that two kids got into a fight and, and a little bit different ultimately from what we hear from HISD saying there was a threat made not just against Heights High School, but Hogg and Hamilton Middle School. So Nick, as we cover this in real time, I think it's important to know and potentially why HISD was waiting or didn't put out the information. But uh, bottom line, some differing reports here in terms of the responses and, and what happened. Yeah, and they and they said uh, specifically the height was against Heights height. The threat was against Heights High School, but they did put Hogg and Hamilton Middle Schools under uh, a lockdown. Um, there are areas where parents can go and, and meet with their kids, but HISD said that buses are in route right now to transport students. That, so if you're if you're not able to get to Heights High School, it was dismissed early and uh, kids are going to get on buses here shortly. But, um, you know, there's a huge law enforcement presence. Don Armstrong, who's up above in Sky Eye, he told us earlier he believed 500 uh, law enforcement vehicles were down there. And you can just see, look at the massive crowd. And that is near the, uh, the staging area where parents are set to reunify with their children. And so you can just imagine the frantic feeling many of them have right now. And um, we, do, we do have several crews down there on the field, including ABC 13's Maya Shea. And uh, Maya, I know that you had just talked to a parent uh, moments ago. Uh, tell us what, what parents are learning and, and, and kind of set the mood for us right now, knowing what we have just learned from HISD. Well, I think, you know, parents started uh, about 90 minutes ago just deathly afraid that feeling in the pit of your stomach like is it happening here are they rushing uh, they were rushing here to the heights from through the four corners of our city now you see some who are here talking to law enforcement a lot of them have moved up about a block or two to wait for the release of their kids I know you guys have been talking about H, um, HISD folks I just saw HISD's uh, Max Mole who's the head of the uh, superintendent's cabinets as well as their director of communications um, walk down the street. I yelled at them, hey, do you guys have anything to offer? They said not yet. And then they walked off. But we do see the parents here. I think now it's a sense of relief, believing that all the kids are safe. But folks are still anxious. You know, this is the reality in America that parents are having to deal with on a daily basis for the last couple of decades. And with Uvalde so fresh on everyone's minds, people are just anxious and they won't feel any better until they get their hands around their kids, give them a good hug and can take them home. And at the end of the day, that's what all parents here I've talked to have wanted, the ability to take their children home safely and in one piece. There's still a lot of law enforcement as well as firefighters on the scene. Uh, folks here are pe peaceful and pretty calm when it comes to that side of the situation. So that is some good news. I mean, everything we've heard so far that everything is fine. Um, but you know, people are traumatized. Even if no one's hurt, they're emotionally traumatized, emotionally drained. And when you hear about something like this, you, your, your whole body tenses up, right? And when it's your own kids in your own neighborhood, I've had a lot of friends who are just texting me saying, hey, what's going on? They're worried about their children and their friends' kids. So it, it's not collective 
collective feeling and, and that collective anxiety we feel as a community, even if you have no children here. But I will say the parents who are here are grateful that things are p coming to an end peacefully today. It's an anxious afternoon, but as long as they can take their kids home at the end of the day today and give them a big hug, it is a win. We, of course, will have much more on this throughout Eyewitness News, but that's the perspective I'm feeling right here at the edge of Heights High School. Guys, back to you. My, my uh, follow-up question, if you would, you mentioned HISD communications and staffers of that nature. Uh, how much, if any, of HISD uh, police themselves and, and uh, response have, have you been able to see in their interaction with Harris County deputies and, H, and uh, HPD? Because uh, obviously now we know what a critical part of that is in terms of the different law enforcement agencies' uh, relationship in their response. Well, I, I, you know, as uh, my colleague Micah Hatfield reported from the other end of the high school, the law enforcement response has been tremendous. I mean, just at this corner, I can point to you, Constable Precinct 6. We're not in Precinct 6, uh, as far as I believe we're in Precinct 1 still. You have the Sheriff's Department. You have the HISD car right here. Number of Houston police officers' vehicles, as well as the Houston Fire Department, and I saw state troopers, DPS, just around the corner. So you're talking about at least six agencies. Now, we do have a lot of law enforcement agencies agencies in Texas, uh, more than probably most other states, but we have seen a lot of them here uh, over the years, having covered a number of these emergencies throughout the greater Houston region. I will say their response, as per usual in the heart of the city, is very, very fast. They come here, they're on the scene very quickly. I've already seen some photos and videos from some teenagers inside the school showing uh, SWAT officers in their classrooms shortly after they went into lockdown. Uh, but, you know, that's all great and good, but if there had been kids hurt or worse, it would have been devastating no matter how many officers were on the scene. So the biggest relief right now for parents is that, yes, law enforcement are here. They're here in great numbers, but hopefully they're not needed. But the kids can go home. That's the biggest takeaway we're feeling out here right now. Hey, Maya, give us a sense of what it's like around the building. If I'm a parent, do I even want to attempt to go down there? Is it, am I able to, even to park close? Is it hectic or, or should I just wait for the bus? I mean, that's up to you, right? As a parent, I would say most of the parents are not waiting. It, it's hectic. Chief, are you willing to talk about? Yes, that would be great, yeah. If you would share that for the parents that are coming to uh, try to reunify with their children, it's going to be at 306 East Church, right up here, just north. Let me get that address for you one more time. I had to uh, but, but, but again, the, there's been no active shooter. Everything's fine. Just taking precautionary measures. We take any type of incident like this very seriously. But let me get you that address because I'd really like the parents to know where to go okay. specifically. Okay. All right. I think we have actually been uh, stating that address. It, it's that church right, right on the, the street, screen. Um, yeah. Ar Ar Arlington and 13, so it's about a block up. Yeah, yeah. we have that yeah. staging area but that, right That was up very right kind of that uh, HPD commander to yeah, want to make sure that they get the message. I will say, like, look. The good news about the Heights is it's a very walkable neighborhood. There's lots of through streets. There's no cul-de-sacs. You can park anywhere and walk two blocks, and you're at the school. So it doesn't seem like any parents are having problems getting here. You can park a couple blocks away, north, south, east, west, and you are here. And you can get here, and that that's not a hindrance. That's the good news. Um, but uh, again, it looks like everyone is safe and accounted for. So you know it is working hours, and if you do live a little far out, you need to wait for the bus. It is totally uh, that's all right too. But I know it's been stressful for so many parents. And the week it's going to be 306 East 15th Street, and that's where we're asking all the parents to stage it. And then we're working on reunification so that we can get all the kids and get everybody linked up. But 306 East 15th is where we're asking the parents to report to. Do you know how initially it came out, like, apparently two kids having a fight escalated to? I, I don't have that sure. information. I'm I mean, sorry. Like, I don't have that information. I'm just I'm on the perimeter right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much. More info. We'll try to get it to you in Waska if I get our PIOs to come over here. Yeah, we want to. Okay. All right. So that's the latest information we have here. And, of course, we'll be out here throughout the afternoon. Keep everyone updated. All right. Hold on, Maya. Don't go anywhere. Uh, and I know Sky Eye is above the staging areas. You can taste, take a look. Yeah, yeah. But Maya, why I love you, you're a very passionate journalist. And when you saw those communications, people, you were not going to let them go until we got answers. We have that clip. Uh, so let's go ahead and play uh, this moment right here. 
Max, where are you guys going to talk? Come back. So there you go. There was Maya. Uh, uh, Shay, Maya, Maya take us back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Personality, right? you... <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you were doing there, Maya. Well, look, I, I, I know you guys have been talking about listening to hear, uh, wanting to hear from HIC. That was uh, Max Moll. He's the, basically the second command, second command, the right-hand man for the superintendent, as well as uh, Sejo, I believe, the director of communications for HIC. So when I saw them heading, they appear to be heading toward the stadium direction uh, area for the kids and the parents, which is about a block and a half from where I am. So when I saw them, I wanted to chase after them. I was hoping they would come to our cameras like the Houston police uh, officer just did and give us whatever the latest information uh, they would because, you know, even if it's repetitive, look, if you got to repeat where the uh, staging areas are or that everything is okay, that's information bears repeating. So I was hoping to hear that, but uh, they obviously had elsewhere to go, but I'm sure, um, you know, it's been a busy afternoon, so we'll, we'll track them down. We'll hear from them eventually. It's ABC 13's Maya Shea reporting. We've also had uh, Micah Hatfield on the ground as well as our uh, photojournalist and uh, Don Armstrong up with Sky I-13. I want to go back to Don now. Don, uh, have you been able to see any of the reunification efforts happening, any of the students uh, being escorted out as it does appear that things uh, seem to be calming just a bit? Yes, I have not seen any of the children coming out of the school yet. Uh, we've been focusing our attention here in this uh, reunification area, if you will, where the students are going to be directed to get together with their parents, and I'm sure that there will be lots of hugs and lots of tears here at this staging area. The staging area is at a church at the corner of 15th and Arlington, and as you can see, uh, as the word gets out, more and more parents are headed in this direction. I pilot James Fox this afternoon has done just a marvelous job, uh, and uh, we have had our limitations here uh, on the request of HPD to stand back, get off of the school. Uh, we've been uh, relegated to about a mile and a quarter away from the school, so we don't have too much noise, because you know helicopters are noisy. And we're up there at 1,000 feet to stay out of the way of the HPD helicopters. At one time, there were three of them here, now uh, just down to one. But all around the school, all of the police officers' vehicles are still on the scene. And I think that you mentioned, uh, starting with uh, Texas Department of Public Safety, DPS uh, on the scene here, HPD, as well as Sheriff's Office and the local constable. And from what I understand, constables from surrounding districts are here as well. A major police presence here uh, at the Heights High School. And uh, clearly, nobody's moving uh, out, out of the high school at this time. I had heard earlier that uh, school buses were on their way for an early dismissal. Of course, that can be a problem in itself and the fact that you put students on the school bus and you take them home and there's nobody at home and the students uh, you know are going hey mom and dad where are you i'm here at the school i'm home now uh, so there's a lot of confusion that can occur when that uh, actually takes place uh, still a lot of police presence here this is where maya shea was earlier when she was trying to uh, get uh, other comments from officials from HISD and HPD, but uh, you know, that's very difficult to do, uh, especially in an active situation like this. Uh, you'll see officials that are actual spokespeople, but they are busy as well. We all have a job to do here. Ours clearly is to bring as much information to you as we can that is truthful and honest. And you know, there's so much that we don't know about what's going on here. I know that we have a full contingent of ABC 13 news correspondents, uh, actual reporters and photographers here, and I'm sure that throughout later newscasts you'll be hearing from all of them. But once again, there are a couple of staging areas. This one here, mainly for the parents, I noticed that there's some media in here as well. That's at Arlington and East 14th. Now the staging area that has been uh, advertised for the parents is down here at the church at 15th and Arlington. So uh, we do see parents uh, meandering around here, and there seems to be a lot more closer to the school, and perhaps word hasn't gotten to them just yet exactly where they need to go to uh, connect with their child. I'm not sure how they're going to march the children down the street. I don't really know that, and uh, neither do we. So I, I actually, we're just still waiting here, school buses to arrive, and for the release of the children. 
as far as the police officers are concerned, uh, there are a lot more cars than police officers that we can see. So I'm sure that there are a lot of police officers still in the building. Now, if they're conducting searches or what it is that they're doing in there at this moment, maybe just standing by just for safety's sake. You know, all of the students, from what we understand, are on lockdown here and the two middle schools that are nearby. So uh, we haven't seen a lot of uh, activity as far as the students are concerned yet, and that is a good thing. They're all safe and locked down inside the school. Well, that's it from Sky. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them, but I'm not quite sure if I can answer them uh, truthfully and honestly. There's an HPD helicopter right there, so they're still on the scene in the air here as well. Back to you guys. Nick, Don, Don what's the traffic situation like? If, I, if I'm a parent, am I going to be, is it going to be tough to get in that area? I know there are so many law enforcement vehicles in that uh, area. Does it look, to, I know there are a lot of trees which maybe can block our view, well, yeah, but... And to answer your question, as you can imagine, with all of the parents that are in the neighborhood, uh, most of these are parents' cars, and it's a jam up in through here. Uh, if I were a parent, I would park several blocks away. Some of these have, but, you know, this is a walking neighborhood in a very residential area of Houston, so it's not that far to the school itself, and there are many ways to get to the school, uh, but again, if you're a parent, uh, the place to go is Arlington and 15th at the church that's there on the corner if you're a parent. It's Don Armstrong with uh, Sky I-13 reporting. Uh, Nick, one thing that we learned uh, since, and we've been on the air since uh, about, you know, 120 or so, so about an hour and 25 minutes now, is that, uh, and Don Armstrong pointed this out, that Hogg and Hamilton Middle Schools were also uh, placed on lockdown, and uh, we didn't learn that until HISD gave us their first uh, burst of information about 90 minutes kind of after this happened, and uh, that sort of indicated a bit different of uh, an initial picture HISD calling it a threat made against schools and so Hogg and Hamilton Middle School we've also learned uh, have been in lockdown this afternoon. Yeah and, and in response to that post on social media you had one I don't know if it's a parent or someone living in the area saying thank you for posting posting an hour after everyone said so. Uh, so obviously some frustration on the uh, delayed response there compared to other law enforcement agencies including Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo in Commissioner's Court gave an update before HISD. It took HISD about 90 minutes before it issued any sort of official information for parents. So obviously you can see some frustration there on social media with that post. And there is a, a challenge in the situation like this in terms of getting information out as quickly as possible and getting accurate information. And uh, those two will sort of all, always be at a head with each other. You see so many uh, concerned parents, obviously so many concerned viewers as well. We have the cha same challenge here at ABC 13, Nick, in terms of uh, wanting to get this information out, especially with the viewership when you talk about a school like uh, Heights High School and uh, potentially two middle schools as well in a district like HISD. But uh, we've seen uh, the information sort of evolve a little bit in terms of what we initially heard from uh, Harris County in their response of an active shooter to what we then heard uh, from HISD. So it's always in this situation I want to remind our viewers, a, a difficult balance between getting the information out uh, as quickly as possible to people who are concerned, but also, you know, making sure that information is accurate. And even though we're getting information on social media from law enforcement, and they were pretty quick to do so, um, we still haven't, there hasn't been an official media briefing and we haven't been able to really ask and thankfully we have crews in the field both Micah Hatfield and Maya Shea were able to ask some questions but law enforcement kept deferring to waiting to hear from communications people so they weren't really feeding us with information and I know that we're, we're working to get that information uh, right now uh, but you know just reading some of the, the the comments here on social media from parents just wondering you know, if there was a fight between two kids, like the Harris County judge said, but there wasn't an active shooter or shots fired, what caused them to believe there was an active shooter there on campus? Did one of the students have a gun? So some really good questions there from parents being raised, uh, wondering, you know, exactly if it was a fight, why it was called an active shooter situation. And from HISD, a report of a threat being made, right. which is a, an entirely kind of 
different situation than a fight breaking out versus potentially uh, a threat from you know a, a random uh, gunman in, in the sense of some other ones that we've seen. But you know, Nick, I, I just have to think as we started. Uh, the school year, uh, we, we had so much coverage here at ABC 13 of all of uh, the different districts and HISD specifically uh, with Millard House II, their superintendent, uh, Chief Troy Fenner was involved in those conversations as well as terms of all of the different school districts having new plans, having upgraded plans and having to answer to the fact of is your response ready in, in a quick amount of time? Will you be able to coordinate, God forbid, uh, something like we saw at Robb Elementary School to happen? This, thankfully, uh, is not that in, in any way. It doesn't appear. But we are seeing, I think, sort of the immediate effects of, of what taking those precautions and having those things in place can mean. And, you know, I know we did a, a number of school stories we've been reporting on this as schools were getting ready to work on their back to school uh, plans and i know that we had been pressing hisd to learn more about what their policy was going to be how many officers they have there on campus so this is something that we have been uh, working on to see we don't know we have not heard from HISD about the law enforcement presence that was there on campus today right. uh, we're you know we're not sure exactly how many officers or if an officer was there um, and we're uh, obviously working to get more information about exactly what happened, what was the presence there uh, from the district, and we're waiting to hear from HPD and other officials here shortly, but we do know that right now uh, school is being dismissed early, so if you have a child at Heights High School, know that buses are en route, but if you want to go yourself, you can see it on the screen there, 306 East 15th. And this developing since about 1 o'clock was when Harris County uh, says they first responded to, uh, as I've, I've said before, reports of an active shooter. Uh, we've since learned uh, not quite that, but really just a lot of differing accounts right now from the different law enforcement agencies and HISD as well. One quick update from Houston police. They have moved the media staging area slightly, which doesn't matter much to our viewers, but we do know that uh, HPD says a media briefing is forthcoming. And so Nick, it, it seems like maybe that will not come from HISD, but will in fact come from Houston police. Yeah, and you know, just going through, um, Ted Oberg's done some great reporting and just about a few weeks ago, uh, he looked into the number of officers that Houston HISD police uh, has and you know what he uncovered was that they only had 202 officers and they have more than 280 campuses and facilities so they are working to get more officers here for the start of the school district obviously that uh, number came from the end of August so I don't know if there's an updated number at this time but just to give you an idea of you know the type of situation HISD is in um, already down enough officers to cover each sure. campus. Um, but, you know, obviously, thankfully, we don't know how that played out today. If there was a fight, an HISD officer was there on scene, was able to break it up. Um, we're still trying to wait to get some information about exactly what happened. As we see some of the distant and different uh, twists and turns of the surrounding areas, again, this continued feed uh, from Sky Eye. And Nick, I would just point out that this is. Uh, the unfortunate world that we live in. I know uh, a lot of our viewers, uh, and it's on our minds as well, say this amount of response for what ultimately may have, you know, only been a threat according to HISD or just a fight between two students, very different than an active shooter. But this is the response sometimes uh, uh, that it, it takes uh, to, to prevent and answer something uh, like this. So it's just sort of both sides of the coin here. And whether it's a fight or the active shooter, I mean, Thankfully, the good news is parents are able to return to their kids. No one was hurt, but you could just hear over our coverage over the past almost two hours, the emotion these parents shared with us and our viewers. I mean, it's just heartbreaking when you hear as a parent getting this notification of a possible active shooter. It all turned out well, but still, Definitely some trauma tonight for these parents. And still so many answers we are working to find out. Eyewitness News coming up at 3 o'clock here on Channel 13. Stay with us. For Nick Notario, I'm Jonathan Bruce.
not the case. Apparently a fight had broken out, but somehow or another, uh, word got back to authorities that it was not going to be an active shooter, but a fight. But all of the police response here was at full tilt to deal with an active shooter. A lot of police response here. Many hundreds of police officials from the Department of Public Safety, uh, from HPD, from the Sheriff's Department, and from the constable all showed up at Heights High School. We got here uh, just as uh, the SWAT officers were heading into the school. We've been here for quite some time now. Matter of fact, our fuel is running a little bit short, so we won't be here too much longer. But in the meantime, we think that there are a lot of uh, officers still in the school doing a uh, search of the school for whatever's left of a search. Students are still in lockdown here uh, at the school. And, uh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. So we're going to continue our live stream. Our producer is giving me instructions as to what's going to happen here uh, as far as our on-air uh, on newscast is concerned. Uh, we have noticed some of the police vehicles moving now, uh, clearing a pathway, because we were a little bit concerned when we heard that school buses were on their way to pick up the students once they get all cleared and released here. I'm thinking, where are they going to go uh, to load the school buses? I don't know how many school buses there are that are servicing this campus. There they are. As a matter of fact, they just pulled in. Uh, so they have cleared. This is right in front of the school. Let me show you exactly where that is. That's on 13th and Beverly. Uh, that's the intersection that we are uh, actually showing you right now. Uh, let me put up SkyMap here to give you a better idea of the lay of the land over here uh, at Heights High School. This is a near town high school, been here for a long, long time. A very storied HISD school. Uh, everybody knows about Heights High School and uh, a lot of alumni here, a lot of parents clearly are on the scene here. Once they got word, they came here in mass. And uh, I don't think that HPD or the uh, law enforcement that was out uh, surrounding the school were quite ready for that. But in the meantime, they uh, have been given a muster area, if you will, down on uh, 14th Street. Uh, matter of fact, I can pull out here, I think, and show you. It's right down here at a church. There it is at Arlington and 15th Street. That's where the parents have been asked to uh, meet their children, those walkers, if you will, uh, coming out of the school and not getting on the school bus. I don't know what they're going to do for carpool this afternoon. I know that there are a lot of civilian cars around as close as they can get to the school, but all of the streets immediately surrounding the school are blocked by uh, police officers. There are crowds gathered on street corners here. I don't know whether they have uh, arranged for to meet their students here or not, but uh, a lot of onlookers and clearly a lot of press are here as well uh, in the Heights High School area. Uh, we got the call a couple of hours ago that there was an active shooter. We came right here. H HPD was uh, on the scene, uh, not only of uh, uh, on the ground, but also in the air. I'm going to uh, pause here for just a moment while we uh, work on an on, uh, on air update. Thank you. Um, we can continue circling, James. Here we go.
down to all the agencies. Officers arrived within minutes. We got a report of 10 people shot, which was untrue. We didn't know it at the time. In a room 213, that's located on the opposite side. When we got to that side, the door was locked. Considering what happened recently in an active shooter, we breached the door. We went in and we immediately started searching because we want to make sure our kids are safe and, and okay, okay? So again, I said nobody's hurt out here, okay? Now we're gonna, this is important, okay? Because I need parents to cooperate with us. When the press conference is over, we're gonna start releasing students. If you have a student, the parent pickup is gonna be on 14th Street. It's right here, right? The buses are gonna come on 13th Street, okay? So we need everybody to work with us on that. Look, I am extremely proud of our first responders response here today, which include our fire. Uh, we had units from Precinct 1, HFD, Harris County Sheriff's Office, FBI, U.S. Marshals, DPS, and also our DA's office. And if I forgot somebody, we'll get it at, at, the, at the end. But I'm going to step out of the way and let uh, Constable Rosen say a few words because it originally came down um, through dispatch to his agency. Um, I was just blocks away, and I was here within minutes. So we're just proud of our team response. Go ahead, Alan. Chief, thank you very much. We received the call at 13.01, and it was dispatched at 13.03, and we received, and our first unit arrived at 13.10. As you can see by the law enforcement presence, law enforcement descended on this school and took the appropriate action to ensure these kids were safe. Thankfully, every parent here should be thankful this was not an active shooter. And, and be thankful for all the things that your kids are gonna be fine, they're okay, and that law enforcement was here to do its job. So parents, we appreciate how concerned you are. We're parents, so we feel your pain, we feel your angst, we feel your, your uh, everything that you feel, we feel with you. And most of the officers out here have children too. So uh, thankfully, we have good news to report. There was no active shooter here, there was a fight. So. Thank, we're, we're thankful for that. I'll turn it over to the HFD yeah. Chief, Chief of Opinion. Thanks. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me just say that, uh, first of all, I thank God that there were no injuries here. No, there was no student injured at this, uh, at this call. But calls like these are not inconsequential. And I know the police department is going to do their job to get down to the bottom of where it originated because the effects that it has on resources is one thing, but the effect it has on the public and on the parents is critical. That is just something that's, uh, that, that should not be done. The, the, the heart strings that, uh, that people are tugging at when they do this kind of stuff, is just, uh, it's not acceptable. The fire department uh, received the call at 1308, that's 108. We had our first unit on scene within two minutes at, 10, uh, at 110. In total, we had a 25 units that responded to the scene, and we had a rescue task force uh, uh, assembled and attached with police department within eight minutes of the call that we received. That is a tremendous uh, coordination effort between the fire department and the police department and law enforcement that are here on scene. I think that's what the community expects. The community expects the first responders to get on scene quickly, to get on scene and, and, uh, and coordinate and start taking action as soon as they get on scene, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, as Chief Finner mentioned and Constable Rosen mentioned, there were no injuries except for one police officer that was treated for heat exhaustion. One of our medic units uh, assisted the officer, and they were released on scene. But other than that, we've had no reports of injuries. When we start evacuating or, or letting people out, we want to do it, please, in, a, in an organized manner to avoid any injuries resulting from, from uh, us vacating the, uh, the premise. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over now to the Assistant Superintendent. Mr. Deputy, uh, Deputy uh, Superintendent Rick Cruz. Yes, thank, thank you. Sir. I want to start off by thanking our uh, different law enforcement entities who are here with us today. I want to again stress there are no injuries to any students or adults in the building, so it is good news. A few additional points I'd like to share. And I'll be repeating them in Spanish as well. 
Again, we're grateful that today was a false alarm at the high school that all of the students are safe. I want to again thank our law enforcement entities because keeping our students safe continues to be the district's number one priority. Again, all Heights High School students are safe and they've been dismissed early. Our students will be transported home via bus. And let me make this abundantly clear, and Chief Peng has spoke to this, we will not tolerate any kind of false alarms such as these. So anyone who makes false accusations around the schools or around any kind of safety situation will be persecuted to the extent possible under the law. We as a district will continue to take the safety of our students seriously and will continue to work with our community partners to make sure this is done. Primero les quiero agradecer por estar aquí. Quiero agradecer la respuesta que tuvimos aquí a partir de todas las agencias de policía que están con nosotros hoy en día. Quiero estresar que ningún estudiante se lastimó, que todos los estudiantes están bien. Lo que ocurrió hoy fue una alarma falsa. O sea, alguien llamó, hizo una acusación que no era verdadera. Pero la respuesta de parte de los policías fue inmediata. Vinieron, llegaron a la escuela, verificaron que todo está bien, todos los estudiantes están bien. Van a salir temprano hoy de la escuela. Quiero estresar que nosotros como distrito vamos a trabajar con las agencias policiales para asegurarnos de que ningún tipo de acusación así se lleve a cabo sin consecuencias. Quiere decir que si alguien llama y dice que hay algún tipo de evento como el de hoy y no es verdad, lo vamos a perseguir bajo la ley. Otra vez les quiero agradecer por estar aquí, les quiero agradecer y decir que todo está bien con sus estudiantes. Y ahora les quiero agradecer a Chief Rogers de la Policía de HSD. I'd like to pass it over to Assistant Chief Rogers. Thank you. I just want to reiterate our appreciation to all of the law enforcement partners that we have out here. Again, I am greatly thankful that actually came in at HISD. It was a fight in progress. There was actually a shooter on our end. We received that information from HPD. We immediately actually have actual campus officers on campus. They immediately started to search the building. And then, of course, the, the additional resources came to help us um, clear the building. Again, the all clear has been given. No students are injured. We will continue to investigate this bogus call that came in with HPD um, as the lead for that. Um, and then we will actually prosecute um, to the fullest extent of the law. We can identify who that is. So if you have any information for us on that, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, this has caused a great panic. But again, all of the kids are safe. We do appreciate all of our resources that have come out today. And again, we're looking forward to a safe year. If you guys have any information for that, definitely give us a call and we'll look into that matter for us. Thank you, Chief. Can we get your name? One second, one second. I want to say this, okay? This is very important. Chief said it, Chief Rogers said it. It's no joke. And whoever made this call, just be, understand. And when I say all our agencies, including the FBI, we're going to trace it down and we're going to hold them accountable, okay? That's the first thing I want to say. And let's address a few quick questions. And why I'm saying it's quick, it's hot out here. A lot of people are packed up. We love each other and love y'all, but I don't want anybody to go overheated. Go ahead. Uh, Chief, I just wanted to clarify. You said there was a 911, like somebody from the school called 911 or the students called 911? I don't, we don't know where the call came, but we think it's outside of the school right now. Uh, but that's part of the investigation. What do you know about the fight? Was there a fight? I'll let Chief Rogers. There was a fight between two students, yes. So our, our priority was making sure that everyone was safe. So that's the reason why a call did not come out. We have to ensure that all kids are safe. That was the priority. And then the calls to the parents come out. Are you aware of any other threats around the state of Texas that are similar to this? No, I'm not aware of anything today. And uh, to be honest with you, we've been on this scene. It's been active. And we're trying to take care of our area. But uh, we'll, we'll check on that a little bit later. Do you think somebody the call is related, or do you know? We don't know that yet. Do you think the fight and the call were related? It's part of the investigation, OK? Can Go ahead. you just address, maybe somebody else, so you can address the issue where we've heard from a lot of frustrated parents that they weren't able to get information quickly from Let me uh, let me Let me address this, OK? Yeah, so. I sympathize. I'm a parent. I got a kid in HISD, OK? I sympathize with you, but we have to kind of use some reason okay here we have to search the school that is the most important thing to stop the threat if there's a threat we don't have time to call once we make it safe we start making those calls okay so i want everybody to understand that we love our citizens we love our parents but it's a process 
and you have to make things safe because if you don't and somebody's actually shooting somebody in that school then that is the worst case scenario so we're going to deal with safety first and then notifications okay but i apologize if it took longer but again we're gonna make things safe first okay now look one more question and we're gonna get out but chief Sí, mire, este, las llamadas falsas de este tipo este, no son sin, con, sin consecuencias. Sí, los recursos que se requieren para responder a estas llamadas de la policía, de los, los bomberos, de todos los recursos que se están aquí uh, presentes, esa es una cosa y es significante. Pero aparte de eso, es el impacto que tienen las familias que están preocupadas por sus hijos. Uh, la ley, uh, como dijo el, el, el jefe de policía Fenner y, y el asistente de aquí de uh, HISD, este, van a investigar con, dónde se originó esta llamada y van a, a, a hacer todo lo posible por traer a estas personas a... a sí, a, 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 a cometer. Sí, exacto. ¿Cómo, qué es lo que origina? Por ejemplo, la, para que la gente sepa, los recursos son limitados, ¿no? Sí, seguro. Cuando esto pasa y esta movilización se hace, para que la gente entienda el, el por qué se va a castigar a esta persona, sí. díganos usted cuánta gente respondió así. Mire, como, como se nota aquí, nosotros uh, trajimos 25 unida, unidades, casi 100 bomberos uh, que están aquí presentes esperando a que, a que este escena esté este segura. El departamento de policía tiene aquí cientos de policías, todas las agencias que están aquí presentes, todos son esos recursos que pueden estar haciendo otras cosas, protegiendo esta comunidad, pero aparte de eso están aquí por esta falta de llamada. Así es que por eso es importante que, que las personas sepan que cuando unas llamadas son uh, hechas falsas, entonces el, el departamento de policía va a investigar y va a tener este, van a haber consecuencias. I want to get parents united with their kids, okay? Yeah. So one more question. I, 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 want, to, I want to ask if there was um, some concern raised earlier that there wasn't enough response, but we see a huge response here. How did that concern play into what we're seeing right now, just to be on the same it's, it, it's not a, this is what we always done here in Houston Harris County. You, you know, it's, it's nothing new, and I don't, I don't want to be smart with it, but that's, that's the truth. Our problem is here in Houston Harris County region, it's too many people responding, so I, I want to be clear of that, okay? So thank y'all. Let's let's get these let parents me, uh, to their kids. Let me address, go, ahead. Uh, go ahead. Let me address that really quick, um, just to just to complete the thought on here. And uh, Chief Finner is exactly right. We had plenty of law enforcement uh, responses on scene. We had 25 units of the Houston Fire Department. I can't be more proud of the work they did. They were on scene within two minutes from the call from the dispatch time. Uh, now, there is coordination that has to be done on our part with law enforcement. Law enforcement has a different approach. They're going to go in and they're going to take offensive action as needed. We need to coordinate with that aspect. So as far as resources, look, we have, we have over 100 firefighters on scene, and they have more than that as far as law enforcement. I think the coordination was appropriate. Yes, go ahead. I'd, I'd like to make one last announcement because we do want to get our students with our families. So as soon as we are done with this conference in a second, we're going to release students home. So if they're on a bus, the buses will continue their operation. If you'd like to pick them up, you can pick them up on 14th and Arlington. Again, our commitment in HISD is to keep students safe. So we will be dismissing right now all of the students and letting them go home either through bus or through parents can pick them up on 14th and Arlington. Les quiero decir que ahorita al acabar esta conferencia en un minuto, ya vamos a dejar a los estudiantes salir. Los estudiantes que van a ir de autobús van a seguir en autobús, van a llegar a su casa en autobús así como siempre. Si los van a recoger, los recogen sobre la 14 y la Arlington. Muchas gracias. John, did you did you charge anyone yet? You know, rush them. Yeah. Yeah. Chief, let me ask you a question. Are we hundred percent? Four or five minutes. Okay. And he still has that gun, and he got scared off. Can, can I tell you this? And I'm, I'm going to be through with you, it. You know okay? what I mean? Yes. I'll tell you this. Multiple teams searched, 
research again and research. That's part of our process. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. All right, man. I appreciate it. Hey, yeah, I got you. I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all. Man, look, I understand, man. Okay? I understand. Okay? All right.